It's time for some rage. That's right. We're adding to our adventuring party with a barbarian. Should be fun. That's right. We've been working on our adventuring party. We've done two of them so far. We've got Mike the Rot Druid and, of course, Epsilon of Sight, the blind wizard who uses eye magic. And today it's time for us to go into the barbarian world and make for ourselves a wonderful barbarian. Now, barbarians are, you know, a very particular type. They tend to be strong, tend to have, you know, maybe big weapons or fight with their hands, filled with rage and all the rest. And so we took to the chat during our live stream and took a look at ideas for our barbarian. Now, we decided that we wanted them to be a dragonborn, have a wide, low head and neck, be rage-filled, and in fact, we took that rage and decided they'd be a salty sea dog, a barbarian sailor man. I thought maybe they would use a, a, a mast or a broken mast as a weapon. And then we really wanted them to have like fishing uh, equipment built into their style. So maybe nets or hooks, or tattoos, a hook hand, you know, not quite piratey, but definitely spent a lot of time on a boat. So with those ideas, we of course took to uh, image searches to take a look at various ideas and things uh, just to get some references in mind. Of course, we don't use these references to trace. We don't use them, you know, as one to one. We use them to fill our brains with ideas so that when we get down to the pencil onto the screen, we really have the opportunity to uh, expand our thinking. We're full of ideas and able to modulate them to make something new, which we did by making a few sketches. So you can see me working on some of the sketches now. I like to do three for this project just to get a taste of the options. And so I started with this sort of like uh, pauldron with net sort of hanging down, almost like a toga, but not quite into sort of like classic pants. And uh, yeah, for the Dragonborn part, it really was a matter of like trying to explore some dragony options. I really like these uh, almost fin-like fronds coming out the side. It really gives them a sort of sailory fish look that I thought was really sort of fun for this kind of style. You can see me here trying to draw in like some kind of mast weapon on his back as a way of getting really into it. And then I gave him a giant sword as well because who doesn't like a giant sword, am I right? And yeah, there's a lot to really like about this particular version. Uh, but this is of course our ideation. So we're giving it a try. We're diving into some other options to see what we come up with over time. And so yeah, we will uh, go from here into the next one. You can see me trying to get this like spiky hook kind of vibe. I don't know if that ends up staying in the long run, but it's a cool uh, design choice. With that, we move on to the next one. So we decided we wanted to try to make the mask more of a handheld weapon in this giant barbarian. And you can see me trying to get a, a new style for the head, uh, you know, one of the things we really want to do when we're doing these um, sketches is experiment. So instead of having the fronds, we went with these sort of like spiky hair kind of things and then gave him some big pauldrons with like that classic barbarian like meshing to connect things. Straps, I think is the word I'm looking for. And torn pants because, you know, Hulk smash, I guess. <laughs> and there's that big spiky hook that I was trying to draw on the last one. And last but not least, we decided to go for something of a spear weapon, which seems appropriate for a fisher, and something of a more dramatic uh, horned head. You can see me putting on that um, very classic barbarian vibe of uh, He-Man-esque cross straps with uh, a really big belt. And there's a lot I like about this, especially the little fish hooks. That seems pretty fun for a fisherman. Uh, maybe something they use in fighting, who knows. But we're just sort of adjusting things here, trying to make the weapon fit the pose more appropriately. Of course, I'm all working off of one basic pose, so there's got to be a gap. And this is what the sketches look like. Once I'd gone through the sketches, I decided the things that I liked, the things that I wasn't sure about, and tried to make a more detailed version of the image. So I used the base of our first image, or our last image, because I liked the head the most, uh, but decided to draw from a number of the features from other Dragonborn images. Particularly, I like the fronds. So they're coming back strong here, and we're just trying to like design them out a little bit more with a little bit more detail. 
And yeah, I decided that in the end that the giant mast wasn't going to work as our core weapon. That it was a little bit too awkward to convey in the particular shot that I was putting together. And so I decided uh, to go with the big old sword. Because I like a big sword. And uh, you can see me working on it here. I did decide to keep with the fish netting as a form of uh, dressing of the character. We'll get to see that in a little bit. And I did ultimately want to go with the hook for a hand because, you know, everybody loves a good hook. <laughs> That's how you get people's attention, right? Oh. So yeah, you can see me here now putting the other sketch in so that I can sort of build off of it and really get myself closer to where I want to be when it comes to this meshing. This meshing becomes an ultimate nightmare for me because it's so detailed that in order to get the net quite right, I spent a lot of time trying to uh, ink in the lines and get the shading right and you know it really takes its own toll in the end but I really like the way that it looks so you see me here just trying to get some uh, tattoos in here thought for a second we would do like a mom tattoo but I decided something even better in the final results which you'll see soon and yeah I thought you know classic sailor pants and we've got a pretty good sketch of our image which means it's time for us to get going with our line art And as always, line art is an opportunity to solidify the sketch, add a little detail if there's things missing, but really just start to go ham on the entire project. I do really like the way this, um, this front nose spike and uh, sort of overbite works. I think it really adds something to the character. And we're just trying to get in some of those details of our tattoo. We decided to go with Dad for our tattoo because that seems uh, really fun. And why wouldn't Dad be honored as well as Mom? There's something about the juxtaposition of the very feminine uh, classical tattoo of the heart followed by the addition of that. I think it's great. Uh, so you can see me here trying to get some of the designs for our, our fishnet. Uh, we're going to be here for a while working on this, trying to make it work the way we think it should. Uh, even still, this is not quite right yet. We're going to have to figure out how to sort of bend it a little bit more and create the illusion of it sort of being tucked into the pants. But we need the pants before we can do that. I'm really enjoying how this adventure party is coming together. I have finished all of the characters so far, but I'd still love to hear your ideas for new characters and new ideas. Uh, I like doing these mega projects that last longer than one video or take longer than one stream to do. And it's really fun to explore various art challenges that are, are bigger than just, you know, style swaps and the like. Uh, it really helps to push me as a creative and make me... Uh, a better artist, I think. <laughs> so I guess that's up to you. But <laughs> I really like it and really happy with it. And uh, yeah, you can see me now finally trying to get the, the net to appear that's more sort of tucked in than just like hanging over the edge of the pants. And I, I think it turns out okay. I think, you know, in the hands of a more skilled artist, maybe they could do more with it. But uh, I'm pretty happy with how this character turned out. Uh, once we sort of got in here, I think I decided it was time to add a little bit more detail lines now that we're, um, you know, inked through. Uh, just to create some shadow and some, you know, finer details. And a little bit of scaling. Just the impression of scaling. We don't want to have to draw a full body of scale. And last but not least, it was time to figure out some colors for our character. Uh, I went with this really bright uh, purpley pink fuchsia. Is it fuchsia? I don't know. Colors are weird. Because uh, I thought it was just really uh, impactful for this character. Uh, and, uh, you know, better than the classic red or anything like that. It really brought out something of it. Yeah, I think the color choices on this one was a lot of fun. It really worked out. And I was really happy. I changed to this yellow because in the gray I was losing something of the, the, the color contrast. And I really wanted a chance to figure out whether this was working. You can see me here lightening up my net so that they have a little bit more contrast for my uh, stomach tone. Stomach? Uh, chest plate, I guess, is like the, the draconic chest plate. Um, and yeah, I always switch my values to, to grayscale so I can actually see what they look like in contrast to each other, opposed to in color contrast, which is a slightly different thing. And yeah, next comes the big challenge of doing our shading and... Like I said before, doing the nets was a real challenge on this one. So 
I had to take my time and figure out slowly but surely how exactly to get this net to look like it was shaded properly. It really is just a matter of coming in and adding in those detailed lines and just hoping for the best in what I'm doing. As I do with so many of my art things. You know, you don't have to be perfect to be an artist. You just have to like be willing to try and try again. Uh, and eventually you finish with something that you really like. In this case, we finished this friend. We decided that Barnacle was a really fun thing. So we named them Caspian Barney Barnacle. I did not mean to make a purple dinosaur and call them Barney, but uh, that's what I did apparently. So welcome to the party, Barney. Uh, we're glad you're here and really one of my favorites from this series for sure. Let's check out the final reveal of Barney. And that's going to be it for today. That is Barney, Caspian Barney Barnacle coming into our party. We'll add him here to the scene and get ready for the next one. Up next, we're going to have a Dwarven Bard to be made. So make sure you subscribe and like and follow along so you don't miss out on any of the fun characters we're making. Uh, we are near the end of this project, and I'm really proud of how it turns out. I hope you liked Barney today. And yeah, till next time, keep being awesome. Bye.